Welcome, church family, and welcome to our moments with Pastor David and Marie. And again, it's always good to have you both joining with us. So welcome. It's good Thank to be here. You. Thank you. <laughs> so how you guys have been jo- enjoying our, our time together? I mean, I know, Pastor, our time together you always love. Oh, it's the best. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> you know, and, and uh, the church is enjoying this, is in enjoying enjoying our time together, hearing your hearts and hearing you share about marriage. And so it's been good. I, I've, I've enjoyed this time. Yeah, I like it. I, I'm pretty sure I'm speaking for both of us. We, we enjoy it. We enjoy getting together. It's something that uh, when we do our marriage couples retreats mm-hmm. and sometimes uh, other things that we do, um, we like to answer questions. It's, I, I like the conversational aspect of that, just to kind of share um, off the cuff impromptu. Uh, Maria is especially gifted at that, and, and I enjoy I enjoy that very much. So no, it's been a blessing for us. Yeah, it's been fun. Hearing your heart, hearing you shed light on both the husband and the, and the I was going to say the husband and the bride, the victim and the bride. And so, <laughs> and so, but it's been great. Uh, you know, church, as we've been going through this, uh, we'll be starting a series on actually Song of Solomon. And so uh, I'm interested to hear that and the teachings and your insight into marriage and how that builds into the relationship. But, you know, I do want to acknowledge those who uh, who may be watching who are maybe not married or, or single and wondering, how does this apply to me? How does this apply to us? I'm single or am I ever going to get married? And so, uh, you know, some of the questions I want to ask today for you both is what were some of the tools as Christians, and, and it would be for some of those who may be waiting on the Lord for uh, for their companion or for their husband or for their wife, what were some of the tools that uh, you guys both used looking back in your marriage that would attribute to where your marriage is at today? You know, I, I might have mentioned this. I'm pretty sure I did earlier in one of the other conversations we had, John. But neither Marie nor I are are of the nature and feel that we have surefire methodologies, formulae Mm. for people to have a good relationship. I suspect that when you read the Bible, you see certain things within Scripture that teaches us what we should be as Christians individually. And I've always focused more on on those things. And I'm not really uh, very good at advising other people as it pertains to uh, using this particular methodology or whatever. Neither one of us are comfortable with that. Uh, I, I have found that in our, our dating and marriage, that the dating uh, was only the prelude to a real life together. Because in dating, you, you discover some things, but you, you don't discover that many things. And so if you're not, um, if you're not, what's the word? Um, you're not really preparing your own heart for for marriage. I don't know that dating is going to be the answer anyway. And sometimes I think people date and waste their time dating, thinking that that person they're with is going to change or mm-hmm. become different. Mm-hmm. And and also, I'm not real good. Neither Marie and I, uh, and I know I speak for us uh, in this, um, have ever been the type that think that we can advise people how to date, what to do on dates and all of that. I, I don't do that. Uh, but if a person's pursuing the Lord and uh, are grounded, I, I think that they will do those things that they see Scripture uh, teaches them in terms of personal relationships with loving and sacrificing and, and all those courtesies and things you find in Scripture. And you learn how to apply uh, principles as it relates to uh, conversing and correcting and and uh, morality within the confines of dating. All of those things are in Scripture. So if somebody wants to be successful in their dating and into their marriage, they need to first and foremost concentrate on their personal walk with Christ. And if they're going to church and they're growing in the knowledge of the Word and if they're serving and doing those things that disciples do, and you meet somebody who also does that, you have a, a very good chance of having a very good marriage. 
but if you kind of are still growing up and still learning how to how to how to walk with God and all don't don't expect to have some extremely tight great uh, dating into marriage relationship because if you're not growing uh, when you get married it, it actually will go down and not up because you know that I mean when you're dating you put on your best face most of the time right and and you show yourself to be what you potentially can be and sometimes um, you're not really those things that you're acting like you are and so the girl speaking from a man's perspective begins to think you're one way when in fact you're a hunter and she's the prey and you're simply acting out what you think she wants and then the ring goes on the finger and the vows are made and then you go back to what you were so if a guy is dating and he wants to have a a good marriage he has to have a good walk with God first and foremost and the same would work with the woman if the woman is walking with the Lord she's not going to be seduced by some some guy who is a deceiver, some guy who's pretending, she'll pick it up because she'll see he doesn't serve. She'll see that he doesn't go to church when she doesn't go, that he doesn't worship when people are singing, that he doesn't want a fellowship after church. Or she'll pick up phoniness in the way that he acts, and she'll say, that's not what he's like when we're alone. She'll pick those things up if she's wise, and if she's covering her dating relationship uh, with prayer and she's applying God's word and she begins to consider her own walk and begins to say to herself, I was closer to God without this guy than I am now with him. Well, those are the warning signs that she should be heeding and he should do the same. If you are not closer to the Lord as a result of being with this person, and that's not a good person for you, at least at this moment, so you can make some changes and you can say, you know what, baby, we need to get in the word together. We need to pray together. We need to attend church together, serve together. We need to make this into something that is real or let it go downhill, you know, and then you end up in a relationship that, that doesn't blossom. It's real simple to us. I, it, it's, it, that's kind of how we think. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, even when I was thinking from our last, our last meeting, our last time that we were together, I've been thinking about during the week, okay, what are some things that we're talking about, what we're going to talk about, what really fascinated me about, and what has been, uh, hopefully you guys can share some light on this, is uh, you guys come from two different backgrounds, right? I think yeah, so. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. But being able to come from those two backgrounds <laughs> and using the things that, uh, as you mentioned, Pastor, being equipped in the Word, spending time in prayer, uh, even if we're to speak to those who are maybe thinking about getting married or those who are engaged, those differences, I guess I can say, those differences don't make a difference when you're in the Word, right? You know, um, again, I'm doing all the talking. Do you want to say something? Well, I, I think sometimes people can be in the Word but not obey the Word, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, as well. I think for... For one thing, I think that for me, um, my parents had a good marriage. Uh, my mom was a, a quiet, she was a quiet woman, but uh, strong. She was strong. At the same time, I, um, and um, she, was, she was a good, she was a good wife. I had that, you know, that was a, a I had that, I had that um, uh, in my, you know, uh, she, you know, to follow after. My mom was very, very good, a good wife and a good woman, and and she was a, a cook. You know, she, she she still is. She still is. <laughs> yeah, she's quite a cook. But um, so I have to, and my dad was a good man. He worked. So Marie, you're able to glean from these things that you saw in your home as parents to really influence and to uh, guide you in your marriage with Pastor David. And Pastor, would you, would, would you use your parents as a model or the way they, or any differences that, uh, because what I'm trying to point out here is, is has there been a, a contrast between the way that you both grew up? And in terms, when you guys started dating and knew, or not dating, that you guys were going to get married, how were you able to 
either bring those differences together or put those differences aside and say, okay, we're going to focus on the Lord. Uh, what were those differences like? You know, sometimes when, um, when you're determining who you want to be with, uh, there are positive things that you got from your family, from your upbringing that, that you expect to be part of your relationship. And then there are the things that you would never want to have as part of your relationship, things that you saw that you would never want to have uh, as, as part of what makes you and your wife uh, a married couple. And so uh, that's just the way life is, John, as you know. You, you saw good things in your dad and mom. Then you said, those things are natural good. They bless my heart. Then you saw other things that you said, well, that won't be part of what I want to be. Now, you may not have said that openly. You didn't say it. You just knew that when you met the girl or when the young woman met the guy, you just you just knew that uh, this person was different than, um, you know, different in the good way than, than what other girls may have been in your life that you, you realized uh, would never have been something that builds you up. And so with Marie, you know, Marie has a lot of personality traits that uh, my mom had. You know, my mom, my mom was friendly. My mom had a silly sense of humor. Uh, my mama loved and devoted herself to her husband. My mom um, loved her kids. You know, she, she was a, a non-believer. My mom dealt with, with illnesses and, and medications that sometimes when, before she got saved, when she on occasion would drink something that the meds would work with the medications, uh, with the alcohol in such a way that she'd become angry and and abusive and and all but that was on occasion not always and so when I met Marie um, I saw the good things that my mom that my mom had my Marie uh, uh, had a, a, a sweetness about her my mom could have Marie was very warm and my mom could be Marie is very hospitable you know very welcoming uh, very oriented towards serving and wanting to make sure you're comfortable. She had those kinds of things. Even when she and I got married, because she never had cooked a meal for somebody in her life until she and I got married. I'm the first person <laughs> who ever was the guinea pig for her food. Guy. You know, she's an excellent cook, and oh. I love her cooking. Oh. Um, she learned to cook by oh, talking to Grandma and and her mom, and even my mom on occasion would kind of help. You know, that's what older women used to yes. do, is to help the younger women to be a, a housewife. I mean, Paul told Titus uh, to, to, for the older women to train the young women to uh, how to love their husband and how to care for the home. Well, that's that was traditional, and so that's part of Marie. And so there were things about her, I'll give an example, that, that, are, that, that were part of my upbringing as, to this day. Even just yesterday, and she doesn't, she won't even know this. So I'll say it. Even just yesterday, she makes our, our dinner for me. And even though it's just Marie and me in the house, she still stands by the stove. She still does. Even yesterday, That's you know, true. she made my meal for me. She's, she's caring for her husband. And I'm sitting down eating, and she's standing up. There's no reason to do that. <laughs> You know, and uh, but that was my mom. That is typical, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah, was my mom. Yeah. So there are things like that, mm -hmm. that that I saw that were good, and then there are things that Marie's not like my mom was, that I also saw that was good. My mom was quicker to to argue who her point or to, you know, she could get angry very easily at times, and and Marie. If, if we ever, which we don't, but if I ever want to argue, I have to start the fight. I, I have to. <laughs> she she, she doesn't start it. <laughs> you know, she won't. She doesn't. She doesn't do that. She she just doesn't. Never has. John. She she's easy going. That doesn't mean that she doesn't have a strong will, and doesn't mean that she doesn't have her opinions. True. She just has learned over time that there's a proper moment that she can share with me in our relationship. She's learned my timetable. And when it's when it's the best time to say what she has on her mind. And she's chosen to do that for for many years now. So we don't we don't 
you know, we we're just talking about this the other day. We we really we don't we don't really argue and fight. Mm -hmm. You know, there are times when we we don't agree with each other. Thank God for that. But we it's not so big an issue that it, it makes a problem for us. You know, because I'm kind of easy going in 99 percent of the time. You know, and so she's very easy going, and so it just worked. And so, um, I guess I guess. To, to briefly summarize all of that is um, both of us, and I think you just said this, uh, you know, we didn't have perfect parents, but we had committed parents. Mm -hmm. And Marie's, Marie's mama and dad, uh, you know, I loved her dad. I loved her dad. Mm -hmm. And I love her mama. Uh, and Marie loved my dad and put up with my mom. <laughs> no, she loved my mom. <laughs> and and um, that, made for, that made the big difference. And it still does. Listen, a Christian marriage is just two Christians living for, for Christ. Yes. That's what it is. And, you know, you can buy your men are from Mars and women from <laughs> Venus or whatever those books. You can buy all the ones you want to buy. And, 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 you know, men like this and women like that. And I think there are general truths and all of that, you know. But when it comes down to it, you know, you make a decision. And that's what we did. And we knew that we were moving in in this direction very early in, in, our, uh, in our dating relationship. I, I didn't have a romantic love for Marie. You know, um, I didn't have that. What I had with Marie, Marie that became our foundation, John, is I had an affection and a friendship for her that made me want to be with her all the time. That's, that's how it was. It wasn't that I had this, this desire for her as a woman as much as I had a desire for her as a person. Um, and that's what I've always had for her. And I, I didn't really ever have that sense of, of a real fact that I've, I've got a very beautiful wife. I, I never thought of it that way. She doesn't feel that way, but she is, she's a beautiful woman. And, um, I, I just never saw that. That's not what attracted me. What attracted me to Marie was her heart, was her kindness, her gentleness, her, you know, her, she made me feel like a, like a hero and a superstar, and she always has, you know, and, and my ego just gets, you know, flattered <laughs> by her, and uh, it's just, uh, that's just, you know, when, when you have somebody who, who, who treats you and looks at you the way this girl has always looked at me. It, it challenges you. I've said this already, but I, I want to be worthy of this person's admiration. I, I don't want to be um, someone dis disappointing her. I don't want to disappoint her. And I live up to her expectations. I try to. And I think that's been really an important thing in our relationship. You'd want to look at it from... Uh from a biblical standpoint, I, I, you know, a lot of people look at your both your marriage as a, as a model because of, of where you guys are at now, the way you both love one another and love the Lord. <clears throat> and pastors mentioned many times how Marie just makes you a better person, you know. And and uh, and I think about when like when Nehemiah was they were rebuilding the wall, and uh, and I've been thinking about this as we've been preparing for this week. How one time, and and we still do this in our marriages. How on one hand they had a, a, a tool, a trowel to, comp to complete the wall, and on the other hand, they had a weapon to safeguard their to safeguard their work. And I started thinking about that in the context of marriage, how we must do the do the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, Pastor, you mentioned just a few moments ago that your attraction to Marie was as a person mm -hmm. instead of as a woman. And do you think it can be dangerous if men have that mentality? I'm just going to love her because she's a woman. And, and we mentioned the, the conqueror thing earlier uh, where it just becomes more of a, a physical thing. You know, God created uh, man to, well, I guess with eyes, you know. He, he didn't make us blind. You know, he created us with eyes. And when God brought Eve to Adam and he saw her, he said, oh, you know, that in the, in the original language, it's he breaks into, into song and 
you know, this is, oh, finally, it's an oh, finally expression, like someone like me. And uh, I, I can't help but believe, and some could disagree, and I'm fine with that, of course, but to see her for the first time, to, 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 there, there was a, a visual kind of snapping to consciousness, you know, and I, I think that, 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 that part of, and it's a natural thing and a good thing, is to be attracted. There's, you know, you're attracted to your girl, and I, I was attracted to mine, but the, 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 the more important thing uh, is to be attracted to something that, that lasts, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you know, we're told that beauty, beauty is, is something that, that on the physical outside is, is a temporary reality, but, but a heart, but the heart, it, it, it is something that grows and, and becomes even more beautiful. And, and, and you know this, and I do too. You know, I get, you know, I'm sentimental. I'm, I, you know, everybody knows that about me. I pretend I'm not to myself, I, but everybody knows that I have a sentimentality about me, and it's true. So Marie, Marie can tell you this. My, my daughter-in-law the other day, my Karina, um, said, I want you to see something. She goes, I think you might laugh at it, but I don't know, because she's still learning me. And so remember she showed us a picture of that old couple? Mm -hmm. She shows me a picture of an old couple. I forget the exact picture itself. I don't want to do dishonor to, to, to the picture that she showed me, but it was an older couple, and it's an older man showing affection to his, his wife, mm -hmm. and I teared up. Mm -hmm. I was thinking of it. That's us. Mm -hmm. That's us. You know, you when you when you think <clears throat> that at one time that she and I could run together. That's true. <laughs> we played racquetball together, <laughs> and uh, we were. I was athletic, you know, and Marie's too. And I was too. Yes. And we would walk and run, and we would. We were in, you know, young, you know, but we're not anymore. But I'm happier now than I've ever been mm -hmm. because I don't need to do those things anymore. Not that they're not good, and I wish I could sometimes. John, there, there are things that, that I tell Marie that about us that I think are the, the things I've learned and we've learned. I speak for us because I know we've talked about these. I'm just yes. exposing what we talk about to you right now. Yes. But we are, you know, for me, I get sentimental, forgive me. I, I have to be with her. I have to. This makes me whole. Me too. This makes me whole. I don't, forgive the emotion, I didn't expect it. I'm serious, it just comes out because I'm opening my heart. I'm happiest when she's around me, always. I've, ha I've had friends who, hey, let's go. You want to do this? Or he, he doesn't go because his wife, and they'll say that to me, but they don't realize that my place of comfort and peace, you know, outside of my obvious walk with God and my ministry, where that's where I get my peace. But my happiness is really being on a couch looking over towards my girl and knowing that she's with me. Mm -hmm. that, that's when I'm at most peace, John, is uh, when I'm with her, holding on to yeah. her. That's a fact. That's a fact. I don't need anything else. I really don't. I don't need anything else. I have what I need. And so I think that's biblical. I feel, you know, when Adam said, finally, flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone, she shall be called woman for she's been taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, cleave unto his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. That's what's happened to us. And was it easy? No. Was it, was it immediate? In God's way of seeing things, yes. You know, there is, the, there is the now. He sees it as already. But there was a process where she and I had to learn 
each other. It's true. We can, can similar backgrounds, but different backgrounds at the same time. So, yeah, I, I really had to, I, you know, for, for example, I, when we were dating, uh, I invited my two roommates to go to the show with us, you know, and, he, and I, uh, when they showed up, he wasn't too happy, <laughs> you know, and I didn't ask him. I mean, I, you know, I was, the, to me, I was always the more the merrier. You know, so, hey, you want to come? Hey, you want to come? That kind of thing. I had to really learn that, you know, there are times when he doesn't want anybody. It's just him and me, you know, together. And I, I, I've done a pretty good job of that. You know, I've, yeah, I've finally she's learned it. to herself. <laughs> yes, I'm dying she died to, to herself. myself. She <laughs> had to. <laughs> um, but, but, I mean, but those are the things you don't, you, you find out about each other. And... Uh, I did quickly quickly found out about that one, but um, That's true. yeah, and I I probably could have invited a lot of people over the house too. Well, we did actually in the early years, especially because we ministered a lot to uh, to the uh, younger younger uh, uh, Christians in our fellowship. We, were, we, they were seventeen, eighteen. It, it was a it was a <laughs> young adults, yeah, 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 young adults, and it was it was actually a very a joy of our hearts, mm -hmm. and, and we were blessed so blessed by. By being um, being able to to minister and to be with them and you know and uh, to bring them into the home of, of, as well. Mm -hmm. Marie, when um, Pastor just sharing in Genesis about the cleaving together from a woman's perspective, uh, how would you share that to maybe somebody who's going to get married or somebody who's thinking about getting married? From your point of view, of what cleaving means to your husband? Well, I think. For First of all, when you get married, I think that you have to remember that he's the one you're to minister to, first and foremost. I think sometimes you can um, uh, um, you're, you can bring other people into your family, you know, without uh, asking him if they can come over or whatever. And, I, 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 you know, I think those kind of things show who, you know, he... if. If he wants somebody to come over, that's fine. But if they, if he rather just sit there with you and just you and him, um, fellowship with one another. But he's a man should always be first. You should, and I would serve my husband first too. They should be served first. Um, and and uh, I I think you should never um, be um, rude to your husband. Um, I think there comes a time maybe you know you if you have a f problem. Um, with your husband, then maybe you ought to seek counsel or or discuss it between you before you seek counsel and work those things out. I think we, we all can disagree. We all have differences, and we come from different families. So there's, it's like iron sharpening iron, and I think that's the thing that uh, um, it comes with time, too. The more you spend time together with your husband, the more you know him. And then you, you know, the, the desires of his heart. And I think it's easier to minister in that manner to, to your husband. You, you, you need to as well study your husband. Know what he likes and what he doesn't. And, um, and encourage them. Be, a woman needs to be an encouragement, encouragement of the man, not tearing him down. Even, you know, because they have a lot of stresses. They're the workers that go home. They leave the home and go to work. And, um, and maybe some of the wives do too. But um, even so, we need to encourage our husbands and thank them for, for putting food on the table. Thank them that we're together. Thank them for the children we have together. And, and um, um, you know, it, it is a time in my life where I'm really enjoying this time, you know, as we're older, you know, it's just, I feel more relaxed, you know, and, and um, you That's because we're on tranquilizer. <laughs> no, it's just because that is not the true at all, you know, it's just, we're, we're together, we can just sit here, you know, alone and, and you know, maybe watch something, a, a good movie or something, and just enjoy, enjoy our time, you know, and the peacefulness of it, you know, uh, but it does take work. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not a perfect woman. I've never been and never will be. But, um, um, but you know, to, but 
women ought to encourage their husbands in, in the things of the Lord. And I don't, and when I say in the things of the Lord, I, I, I'm not necessarily saying you got to, um, you may be living with a non-believer and keep, uh, and keep telling him things about having to go to church. You need to go to church. You need to put him and get him and put him in your prayers. Mm -hmm. Begin with prayer if you're having a, you know, if you've married an, a non-believer. Pray for his salvation. Pray that we come to the Lord. And be the kind of wife. Show him how much you love him and appreciate him, what he does. He comes home from work and, and, and feeds the family. I think if you show him that you're grateful. He's going to want to be with you. And, 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 and you may be able to win him over to the Lord through those, some of those things, like, you know, just encur and encouraging him um, verbally. You know, every man needs to be encouraged, you know. This is my man. Mm, Nobody can right. have him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, but every, every, every man needs to be encouraged. You know, even if a woman says, well, I don't know how, what I can encourage him for, or there's nothing that, to encourage him, find something. You can find something and encourage him. But they need to know that you're behind them and that you love them. And this is forever. Yes. Because when the kids are gone, it's only you and him. Mm -hmm. and Finally. <laughs> I was thinking, I still have a long time. <laughs> Except for we've got quite a few grandbabies now. Gosh. How many grandbabies do you guys have now? Nine, right? Is it nine, I think? We right? have uh, 11 altogether. Oh, my. Oops. <laughs> Not, you know, two have been grafted in, oh, and oh, I can't nine think. have been born to us. Yeah. What a blessing. So 11. What a yeah. blessing. I love it. It's cool seeing them come around here and yeah. visit you guys, the love you guys have for them. Yeah. You know, Pastor... Uh, and our last message, you, we were uh, you were teaching our last message, and obviously we're we, staff comes and watches the uh, is attendance for pastors' teachings, and uh, I know sometimes when you're teach, I picked up on something you did, and it really gave me some insight on how much you're attentive to Marie, and so you're on the pulpit, and uh, Marie came, and right away, I saw you. Yeah. When you saw her, yeah. and that spoke to me, that really spoke to me because the way you see people come in and out all the time, right? They're, they're getting up during that service and stuff. This time, <laughs> they though, quite often. <laughs> <laughs> this time you locked in, and I saw that, and I saw you. I saw you, and it and it really spoke to me to see that. When we're in Israel, I would watch, and you always knew where Marie was at. I'll keep an eye on her. Yeah, and uh, and Pastor always tell me. Uh, you, you'd go with some of the girls and watch Marie's going to look for me. And sure enough, mm -hmm. you'd look for him and you'd, sp you'd, you would spot him quick. And I watched those things. And, and those are things, again, that uh, I enjoy seeing because it, it speaks. Those actions speak louder than words. And it gives me a little glimpse of the, the trial in one hand, building, and and building your marriage, and the sword in the other protecting it. My father, my father was a one-woman man, which to me was uh, an unbelievable example. And I was with my dad when I was probably in my early early teens. My dad and he had a friend, and his friend uh, and my dad and I went to the store together. Went, we drove to the store, and uh, I'll never forget this, John. How. As we were driving, my my dad's friend turned to my dad and spoke to him. Now, my father, um, I'd say my father was a handsome, a handsome mm -hmm. man. My my father had, uh, my father was a handsome man, and um, my my dad's friend turned to him, and I'm sitting in the back seat, and he said something to my dad about some good-looking woman, I guess, in a car next to us, and he said, "Hey, Dad." He said, Frank, you know, check her out. That's how he spoke, you know. <laughs> His name was Big Lou. <laughs> he was like five foot four, so we called him Big Lou. So Big Lou and Big Louie. And so Big Lou goes, hey, Frank, like that. He's, he's from the streets from a long time ago. Check her out. My dad turns to him and says, Louie, my son's with me. I'll never forget that. My son's with me. And um, that, that my dad, just by telling his friend, shut up, I don't want to look at this woman, 
those are the little things in my dad that I learned as a, as a, a boy that my dad doesn't look at other women. My dad's especially aware of where he's at and his son's in the car and he's gonna be a good example. That was my dad. See, so I grew up with that. I grew up with, with a man who, you know, he, he, my dad took an early retirement because my mother was crippled. My mom had such physical maladies, mm -hmm. lupus and, and things, you know, that were, she was in pain so, so bad for so long. My dad took an early retirement to care for her and he never complained. Did you ever hear my dad? Never. My dad never complained about his lot in life. Never. How he had a sick wife from the time my mom was 24 years old. She was sick all his married life until my father died at 74. And um, just to show you one more thing about him and what I learned from him, my mama said to me when dad was in the hospital, when he, he died, he was, he was on his deathbed. And um, my mama said to me, they won't let me go into the room with your dad. We're at the hospital. And I said, you know, really, why? Because my dad had had a heart attack. She said, because the minute I step in the room, his heart starts beating mm -hmm. too fast. Mm -hmm. And they said, it's not good for his heart. Just walking in the room, that's how I am. Just walking in the room, your heart just beats. So she literally is my heartbeat. She literally, like my dad. My mama was my dad's heartbeat, John, to the end. Mm -hmm. That's what you see. God put that love in my heart. God did. But I had a good example with my father. And I've tried with my boys to be a good example of a man who loves his wife. I have. And I would think that they could both say that my dad's been a good example mm -hmm. the way my dad was to me. And I think that's part of being a husband is, is to love that woman. And, and somebody once said, do your children a favor, love their mother, mm -hmm. you know, because my boys watched and they saw a faithful man, a man who worked long hours, a man who lived as a man. They, they've seen that in me. The way I saw that in my dad, the way I saw that. My dad was 65 when he retired. He wouldn't have, he would have kept working. He would get up at three in the morning every day, Monday through Friday, three in the morning. He'd go to work, he'd come home at three in the afternoon, a long day for a man his age, and he was, you know, he was tired, and he'd come home and take care of a woman who needed his care, and he did that. He did that until he couldn't do it anymore, John, and then he went home to be with Jesus. So I learned that, and, and I would like to say that's, that's the man that I am. Yeah, I learned that. It's, 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 our lives have been very blessed. God knew what I needed as well. And instead he gave her me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're so bad. You're so bad, but we're blessed. Well, you guys, I <laughs> want to thank you guys. That, that was, a, I thought, a powerful time sharing. Hearing your heart, you can't script that. Actually, in my little prop notes, it says, cry right here. Let <laughs> 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 uh, it. <laughs> let it flow let it flow <laughs> thank you guys so much that was so encouraging to hear and for those who have been watching i i hope you enjoy our time together and is there anything you guys like to say to our church i'd like to say how much we love and miss our church yes and we are praying every day um that we'll be able to reconvene to assemble once again but until that moment um Marie and I come on, on Sundays. The church doesn't know this. Some found out. Uh, uh, now we're letting them know. But, yeah, we come out on Sunday. I'm their second service. Mm -hmm. And we are their second service. And, and uh, just love to see them when they drive by so I can say hi to them, you know, and tell them how much we love them and miss them. And, and I'll, I'll be there on Sunday, and I'll be there. I'm there every Sunday. Marie and I are there every Sunday. 
second service especially. Sometimes we've been there first, but second service. And if uh, anybody wants to come and say hi to us, um, we miss them. And we would love, we would love to see them. And, and God knows that it isn't too long from now that we're going to be able to come back on a Sunday morning, a Wednesday, and we're going to be able to celebrate in our, our first Sunday together again. We're going to do our Easter service, you know, a resurrection service. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a lot of worship and praise and joy and tears and and all of that. So until that moment, you know, it'd be a blessing if they came to say hi to us um, on Sunday. And if not, uh, we are praying for, for our church, and I know that many are praying for us. Yes. And um, so Marie and I, you know, we together, we, we, we love our church. We may not know every single person, and we don't. And I don't know that it's possible this side of heaven, but we do love our people very much, and I think many know that. So we miss them and uh, look forward to seeing them again. Can't wait. Can't wait to see you guys. We love you. God be with you. Thank you guys and uh, join us again next week for Moments with Pastor David and Marie uh, on behalf of our, our time together. I love you guys, miss you, and look forward to having you joining with you guys soon. God bless you guys.